Okay. Hello, hello, hello. We are officially started. We are officially getting everybody in from the waiting room. Everybody's come in. Mary in Texas. Hi, Mary Ellen. Um, so, um, Tony, you're asking if last week is available. This is actually a webinar that I only do a handful of times a year. So there was no last week. Um, I will be talking about at the end a program that I offer that is a multi-week program, um, but this is just a one and done. It's an opportunity for you and me to spend some time together. Um, we'll be here about an hour uh, talking about the three things that you need for, for free motion quilting success before you even get to your sewing machine. Uh, and then we will talk about what's next. So if you are just tuning in and you've never done a, a webinar with me, you have not missed anything yet. This is a one-off event that I like to do as a gift to you all a few times a year. Um, okay, so I am recording and I will upload the replay to my YouTube channel and I will make sure to send you all a replay link and a small little gift tomorrow morning. Um, depending on what kind of operating system and device you're on, if you would like to turn on closed captioning, that's either going to be down here at the bottom in the menu, or you're going to have a hamburger menu that you're going to tap to be able to turn those on for you um, if you need them or want them. Um, without further ado, let's go ahead and I am going to share my screen and we will get started. I'm just kidding. Where's my... Okay. I probably should have made sure that this was good to go. Hey guys, on Silver Sedan, no plates. Could be the car the witness described. Right. All right. Share screen. There we go. Okay. All right, so let me move y'all out of the way over here. And let's get started. All right, again, welcome. My name is Joni Gaines. I am the chief thread lover here at For the Love of Thread. Welcome to Team Thread. Now that you've come to one of my events, you are officially a member, and I am so happy to have you here. Um, I just want to welcome you all, and let's go ahead and get started and um, figure out how we're gonna master free motion quilting before you even approach your sewing machine. Okay, so this is what we're gonna be talking about tonight. And if you're noticing the theme in my titles, yay, cause I am in my Taylor Swift era right now. Um, I wanna talk a little bit about my quilting journey that brought me to where I am today. I wanna talk a little bit about the, the three things um, that you need, whether it be your physical space, your actual supplies or the right mindset. Um, to be a successful free motion quilter. I am going to tell you a little bit about a program that I have available that's a multi-week program that, that goes really deep dive into free motion quilting. Uh, and then I want to take about 10 minutes to do some questions and answers from you, whether it's about the program, whether it's about anything we've talked about tonight or anything quilty related, happy to help. All right, let me just double check the chat. Oh, folks are saying hello to William. He is going to be so excited to hear that. Okay. Again, I'm Joni, and I am the chief thread, thread lover around here. Um, it is my mission to inspire you to create beautiful quilts in an uplifting community. Um, I fully believe that this craft that I love so well and have been practicing for over 24 years, um, that I'm sorry, let me just take care of that. Okay. Um, I fully believe that this craft that I love so much that I've been practicing for over the past 24 years has been a creative outlet, a lifesaver, um, a way to make friends, sometimes a way to make enemies. Um, but I'm really, really excited. And the only thing that I love more than quilting is sharing what I know about quilting with other people who either quilt or want to learn to quilt. Um, I'm just so excited you're here. So hi, it's me and my first quilt. I'm the problem. <laughs> Um, this is my very first quilt, and it was absolutely horrendous. I did not know what I was doing. I picked the ugliest fabrics that I could find. I had a cardboard cutting mat, and I just cut a bunch of squares, didn't know what to do next, put them all in a bunch of um, Ziploc baggies. And a few years later, uh, maybe three or four years later, I um, 
I, I was noticing somebody was doing some hand applique at a meeting that I was at. And I'm like, hey, what's going on with this thing that you're doing? She's like, oh, I'm a quilter. And I'm like, hey, I've got these baggies. Do you want to come over? And she comes over, she takes a look at my baggies and she's just, no, she, she cannot believe that this is something that is actually happening on, on somebody's living room table. Uh, but she does help me figure out how to put all of these squares together, um, how to get everything basted. She, she goes through the whole thing with a lot of patience and love. Um, and so uh, very grateful to her for, for getting me through this. This, I kind of joke, my first quilt is the cheap sunglasses of quilts that no matter where I put it to try to lose it, it always pops back up. Um, so that, that, that's a, my absolute disastrous entry into quilting. Um, she was very patient though, and she helped me shake it off. And she went and got me a new pattern. She took me shopping, showed me how to pick out fabrics. We talked about value. We talked about scale. Um, she did all of the math for the pieced borders because I had it in my head that this is what I wanted my border to look like. And after this quilt, and I knew how it was done right, I was hooked. I'm sure you all can relate to that, but I was super excited. I was super ready to go. All right. So when it came to learning how to quilt, I would take class after class and I would get through meander, which is generally speaking, the first motif that's offered in any free motion quilting class if, that if you've ever taken them. And then I just nope right out of it. I stayed here for years and I, I will with shame in a few slides tell you exactly how long that is. So if you would like to maybe start guessing, um, feel free. Okay. So I found Quilting by the Bay when I first moved to Panama City, Florida in 2002, and I love putting these kits together. I was hooked on picking out fabrics and color choices and value and piecing and trying to be the most precise cutter and piecer that I could be. But when it would come to the quilting part, I would meander and then I would move along. A lot. Um, and I was telling you that I stayed in this era for quite a while. So I found Quilting by the Bay in 2002. These quilts range from 2010 to 2019. So if you're doing some math, I stayed in my meander era for almost 17 years. And... I was starting to feel like quilting wasn't enjoyable anymore. I was starting to feel a little bit, uh, I had some serious imposter syndrome going on. I was starting to feel like a one trick pony. Like I was great at picking these colors. I was great at piecing. And then I would meander and move along. This basket here sits in my living room. And anytime we have friends over, whether we're just watching a game or a movie or playing cards, I always put this basket out in the middle of the room and friends just start to take quilts. And by the end of the night, everybody's got a quilt on their lap and the basket is empty. And I was looking around and I was like, meander, meander, meander. And it was really embarrassing. And that's when I decided that I really needed to do something to bust out of this era. Okay, so that is when I decided that I was giving warmth to my friends and my family when I was making my quilts, but I was not adding any depth to my art. I wasn't learning anymore. I wasn't advancing my skills. I was just really feeling stuck. And so I started to learn as many motifs as I could. I practiced over and over and over again and I learned about tension. I learned about speed that you don't need to run your sewing machine at the fastest speed because that's probably the worst thing you can do as you're trying to develop your quilting skills. Um, I was making a ton of mini quilts just so that I could get the tops done and start quilting them. And I was in love. This particular quilting motif is called metavishing and it takes a lot of thread, <clears throat> but it is so bouncy and it is so fun to do. And just to get the oops out of the way, I realized that my center medallion was pieced incorrectly the second I had it basted. And I was not about to unbaste, unpick, re-sew, re because basting is the absolute worst. So we're just going to go with this mistake. But this is the biggest quilt that I quilted right after learning all of my quilting motifs. So you can see in the photo on the right. I've got some embellished continuous curves in that green and yellow border. I did some loopy meander, just as a little bit of a throwback to where I came from. And I'm really proud of how these feathers turned out in the border itself. They're a little bit like crown molding. Everything seems kind of like upside down and 
backwards until you get the hang of it. And then it was just a great flow. And I think I did it in one thread. I was really proud of that. Okay, so this is, um, I called this the Little Llama's Big Con. My daughter's nickname is the Little Llama and we were at the quilt store and she wanted to get this kit. It was too expensive for a college student. So I paid for it. And then she wanted me to help her cut it because there were a lot of pieces. So I helped her cut it. And then she's like, well, I'll take it home and piece it. And then I'll bring it back to you to quilt it. And then it ended up staying with me. I pieced it, I quilted it, et cetera. And so I wanted to be able to do something with this, but I wasn't quite sure. So I sent her a message and I said, if I can just meander this guaranteed, you will have it by Thanksgiving when I come to visit you. Semi-custom quilting, maybe it'll be ready before Thanksgiving. Maybe it won't be. Custom quilting, it will be your funeral shroud. Like that, that, that was the timeline I was giving her for this. And so she said that she would prefer to have it by Thanksgiving if at all possible, but that she did want something a little special and fancy because she knew that I had been learning all of these motifs. So this has paisleys on the tea pots. It has swirls on the tea cups. I did switchbacks in the hat bands. I did graffiti quilting in the mouse and the bunny. And it was just really fun to do. And I think this one is 76 by 81, I wrote down. But regardless of how big your quilt is, you're only ever dealing with what's right here in your hands. So there might be a lot happening in the throat of your machine as far as whatever you have rolled up or crammed in there, but you're only really talking about these four by four inches, right? So this was like kind of when I knew that I had arrived and now quilting is my absolute favorite part of the whole process. Okay, so that is my journey thus far. And now I want to talk about the three things that will make you successful. Excuse me. Okay, so tools. There's not a lot of tools. I'm here to tell you right now, quilting is a $6 billion industry worldwide. You don't have to spend all of that. You can spend $27 and a sewing machine and have what you need to be successful at, at free motion quilting. So Bernice here on the left, she is the true star of the show. Um, she is a workhorse. She is sitting right here behind me. I'm broadcasting from my studio tonight. Uh, and there is not a quilt that she has not been able to handle. Um, so your sewing machine needs to be able to lower or cover the feed dogs. And you need to be able to attach a darning foot. Sometimes it's called a quilting foot or a hopping foot. I guarantee you, if you have a machine that has been manufactured within the last 50 or 60 years, 90% sure that I can tell you that your machine will do free motion quilting. Um, take a look at your user manual to just make sure that those two things can happen. But those are the features that you need in the sewing machine. And then when it comes to the supplies that you need, it's really minimal. Obviously the rotary cutter has revolutionized how we um, do quilting at all. I was uh, talking to somebody at QuiltCon last week who said that um, she she broke her arm and was having trouble with the rotary cutter. And she said that if she had to go back to cutting with scissors, that she was just done being a quilter altogether. That's how valuable that, that rotary cutter is to her. Um, and then you need a good pair of quilting gloves with the, the grips in them. That's about $7. Um, I'm a huge fan of the hair, hair marker as a um, marking tool, simply because that is something that doesn't leave a mark that you don't have to remove. So it's not like the friction pens where you take the iron and take them off because I've heard horror stories about that ink coming back. It's not the blue um, water soluble pens where you have to get your quilt wet to remove. Not buns. There's some on, out on top of the dryer in the back porch. Thanks. Um, so, uh, it, and, and then, you know, I don't like chalk because it usually starts to like fade your line and it's not as precise. So a hair marker, what it does is, is you just run it kind of like a pizza cutter into your fabric and it just makes a groove and that's your line for quilting. Um, $7 needles. You want to make sure that they've got that green band on them. If you look up for specifically for quilting, um, you're going to be absolutely fine there. Um, and those, you can get a pack of the five down here for less than $4, uh, and then really good thread. And I am a thread snob. I am all in on RFL 50 weight cotton thread. Um, that does not mean that that's what you need to use, but the biggest thread tip that I would have for you is that whatever fabric your quilt top backing and batting are made of is what your thread should be made of because you don't want the weights or the strengths 
of the thread and the fabric to be different. So if you're using cotton for your top and your backing and your batting, you want to use cotton thread. That's really the biggest tip there. Okay, so physical space. I want to talk about no matter where you're quilting, I have quilted on a three foot computer desk. I've quilted on a dining room table that seems like it's way up high. Uh, and then I, right behind me, I have a table that I made. Um, it's just a, a plain conference style table. It's just short. So that way the, the height of my sewing machine is where I need it to be. Um, and I have been able to make all of those work and I'm gonna tell you why. So, Biggest thing is um, let's talk about dining room tables because that seems to be a pretty popular place for folks to um, to do their quilting. So like I said, the height of that table is set up for eating. And so once you put your sewing machine on top of it, you're going to see your shoulders start to do this, right? And so the way to solve that problem is you bring your chair up. So if you don't have an adjustable chair, just go and grab a couple of pillows off of the couch that your husband says are unnecessary. Put those under your bottom, and then that kind of brings you up. If your feet start to dangle, make sure that you've got some sort of a step stool or a couple of books to put underneath your pedal, because the best physical space for quilting, regardless of if it's three feet or six feet, is going to be where your shoulders are over your hips and your hips and your knees and your elbows are all as close to 90 degrees as possible. So depending on the height of where you're sewing, just make sure that you're moving everything up or down to go with that so that everything's at 90 degrees. Even with the best possible space though, breaks. Breaks and hydration. Make sure that you're setting a timer to get up every 30 minutes. Make sure you're drinking water because if you're starting to haul a quilt around and if you really get in this and you decide that you are going to go all in and do something that's like 90 by 90 or a king size quilt, it's a workout. That is a lot of weight that you're moving around. And so breaks and hydration in addition to all of those 90 degree angles. All right. Okay, this is the biggest one. This is the one where I find people struggle the most. And it's essentially boils down to believing in yourself. Um, so I want you to take a minute, look at this little girl, and think about when you were her age. And think about when somebody came and said, what do you want to be when you grow up? And you probably said, I want to be a ballerina, a doctor, and an astronaut. Because, of course, why would you not be all three of those things? You're awesome. You have ambition. You have dreams. And so, of course, you're going to say that. And then somewhere along the line, we either hear it from our folks, we hear it from our partners or our friends that we're not, we're too big, or we're not big enough or we can't do everything, we can't have everything. And I think this is really, really common for women to be told um, in our society that you know you can have it all, but really a, a lot of this gets, gets taken out of us um, as we go through life. And we start to apply all of these messages that we get to every part of our life. So not just what do you wanna be when you grow up, but how do you want to bring joy into your life? How do you want to have fun in your life? Um, and as your insecurities get louder as you grow up, your confidence gets smaller and quieter. Okay, I'm going to let some folks think on that for a second. I want to open up chat. Okay. All right. It looks like what was the two things your machine needed to be able to quilt? I see that somebody did answer this, but lowering or covering the feed dogs and that darning, quilting, hopping foot, depending on what your brand is going to call it. And yes, we will. I am recording this to send out for um, tomorrow. Okay. So you've thought about the little girl. You thought about when you were her. Let's see what we can do, at least in your quilting world, to go back to being that little girl and knowing that you can do this. As I said earlier, you're only dealing with that four inches by four inches in between your hands and nothing else in the world matters. Everything else is patience and contortion. It's all just a matter of how you're gonna shove things around so that you can work on that four by four inch space 
and then move on to the next. Okay, a lot of what I hear from quilters, I can't quilt a large quilt. I don't know enough motifs. I don't know which motif will look best where. And these are not technical problems, my friend. These are the things that we say to ourselves to keep us from success. These are the lies that we tell ourselves that we can't do it so that we don't have to face face what you know what what everybody else is telling us about ourselves. Okay. So, those are the three things. This is going a lot faster than I thought, so we're going to have plenty of time for Q&A. Um, so I am going to come out of here for a second. Thought share. No. This is not looking. Oh, here we go. Stop share. Okay. I'm going to come out of the presentation just for a little bit. I want to um, take a look at the the chat to see if there are any questions. Um, I see a couple of folks saying, turn the sound up. If you're not hearing me, I'm getting enough feedback from folks saying that they are hearing me. That might be something you need to check in your speakers and make sure that you're broadcasting from the right speakers at the right volume. Um, okay, so what is a good throat size for a machine when quilting? Um, so I will tell you, I had a student in my last class who had a very entry level Singer sewing machine, the 199 one that you would get at uh, Joann's, for example. And she did the class project, which was a 64 by 64 inch throat on that machine. Um, is it nice to have a larger throat space? Absolutely. Anytime that I've upgraded my sewing machine over the last 24 years, I have gone from very small to moderately acceptable um, on, on my Bernina. Um, so obviously bigger is better, um, but you can do it on a regular sewing machine. Um, okay. The marker name. So this marker that I showed earlier is called a Hera marker. H-E-R-A is how you do that. And then I do have a quilt sandwich here. I am going to show you what it looks like unmarked. And then let me come through and I'm going to make a, a tic-tac-toe. And all I did was drag it along and now you can see that there are lines there. And I know that that's the line I need to follow if I'm doing some straight line quilting, or these are the spaces that I need to fill if I am doing free motion quilting. And that's why I love this because all it does is leave a crease in the, in the fabric that you're going to sew through or over, and you don't have to worry about removing ink or mark or chalks later on. Okay. Let's. Okay, I've quilted two king size quilts, straight lines and meandering. Yay, with the large quilts, how do you get the quilt sandwich so all pieces are smooth? Um, so that a lot of that happens in the basting stage. Um, what I do is I clear out a section of our living room. I take my batting or my backing and I lay it flat and then I take some duct tape and I tape the corners and then I go all the way around the edge so that it's taut but not tight. Um, and then I smooth my batting over it. I, sp I put spray based in between so that way they're glued together. And then I put the top on top of that, baste it again with the spray base so that they're glued together. And if you have a pretty flat quilt after you've basted it, you're not going to get the, the puckers and the wrinkles on the other side that you might um, get. So if you're having trouble with that, that's likely going to be in your basting section. Which end did I use? I used the 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 funky end, the bent end, the curved end. The other end is an all, so that way, if you need to, you know, get some fabric to go underneath your your presser foot, you can do that. But this is the marking end, and it's just a a blade that you run on the fabric. Um. So for the hair marker, do you just mark the small areas at a time? So the quilt that I have back here, 
um, is 80 by 80. It's an Elizabeth Hartman. I like to um, torture myself with her, her piecing uh, every so often, every few years. Um, and what I did is I straight line quilted an X through it. And then I put, I took it over to my cutting table and every two inches I made a mark of, of, of a line. So that way I would have two inch um, panels, if you will, columns, if you will. Um, and I would do a quarter at a time. And then I went back through and stitched over those lines. Um, what thread do I like the best? I like the, um, I like RFL 50 weight. It is the orange tab. It's 100% cotton. My machine loves it. I love it. Um, I use it for um, finer embroidery if I need a very thin thread, and it works beautiful for that. Um, A R I A U R I F I L is how it's spelled, and it's it's delightful, and it doesn't leave a ton of lint. I do have to clean very regularly because I use my machine quite a bit, but it does not leave a lot of lint, and I absolutely love it. And once I found it, I've never gone back. Um, using the spray base, do you ever have your machine get gummed up? So I do get like a little bit of a, a gummy at the top of the needle, but it has never gotten into my feed dogs. It's never gotten into my presser foot, um, uh, anything like that. So, it, you know, a little gum on the needle, but not so much that it's ever been a problem. Um, if you start to have tension problems, changing out your needle is the number one way to, to fix tension problems. Um, and so, you know, I'm that I've probably will have 40 hours of quilting on this quilt behind me before, um, I'm all done. And I will probably go through five needles on that. Just, I like to, to swap them out and make sure that I keep them super sharp so they don't have problems later on. Um, are you going to show us how to fit the quilt into the throat space? Okay. Um, so I, I can show you what I have going on behind me. Um, and I will tell you that there are two ways to, that I found to, to get your quilt into your sewing machine. You can be a roller or you can be a crammer. Um, so a roller, they're going to take the quilt, they're going to roll it up and they're going to put the rolled part in their, in their throat. And that works really well for some folks. I have never, ever been able to do that and not have it be a weird pool noodle kind of situation. Um, I feel like it's, you know, you get to your quilt gets to be a certain size and it's just too much roll hanging off of either end, um, to be worth it. Or you can be a crammer. I'm a crammer. Um, so you can see this is 40 inches of the quilt in here. And then the rest of it is just all out here to the side. And I will just wiggle it around until I've got my four inches square in between my hands. Concentrate on that. Do some more wiggling. Concentrate. Do some wiggling. Um, do I, okay, let me see. Let me get to show us how to get in this. How do I control the speed of the sewing machine? I'm assuming Sandy. Um, I, my machine has a lever where I can make it go faster or slower. And I do it on about a quarter speed to a third speed at the, at the fastest. Um, some students last cohort, they did not have that. And so what they did is they found a way to like jam up their presser foot so that the presser foot would only go down so far. And that's how they did their speed control. Um, problem with balance and design quilting. When I get done, I always see areas that sh I should have quilted more. Yeah, a, a lot of that, if you're doing an all over motif is practice. Um, and some of that is doing a quilting plan in advance. And that's just essentially taking a picture of your quilt and drawing on it where you might like to put different motifs. I go really in depth into that, into the course, um, but quilting plan and practice. Um, Nancy, the recording, I will make sure that I send everybody an email tomorrow morning with the link and a small gift for you all for attending. What size needle? I use an 8012. And if you um, are searching for quilting needles, they will have a green band on them. So at the at the shank, they're going to have a green band there. Uh, Pamela, do I start in the middle? Since I spray base, no, because everything is basted everywhere. When I was pin basting um, 
and there was an opportunity for things to shift, yes, I would start in the middle and work my way out. But now that I spray based, a lot of times I will just start on one end and go all the way to the other side. Um, there's another Scott here. Yes, we will be sending the link out tomorrow. How do I control speed and stitch length? Stitch length is a matter of, um, it's kind of like driving a stick shift car if you've ever driven it. So the way I like to say it is that your clutch and your gas always have to equal 100%. So when you're stopped, your clutch is all the way in and your gas is all the way out. So that's 100%. But as you start to go, it's 10, 90, 20, 80 until you get all the way into your gas, right? And so stitch length and, and quality if your machine has a way to control stitch length, it will do it for you. But again, practice. It's just a matter of practice. Um, hi, Jean. Welcome. I'm sorry you're late. We are sending out a link tomorrow, though. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my presentation because I would like to tell you about the next course. So... You belong with me, one of my favorite Taylor songs, because you do belong to me. And I am so happy to introduce you to From Whole Cloth. It is the course where beautiful quilts, top to finish, all by you are made. Um, we spend three months together. We learn 30 of my favorite free motion quilting motifs. I break them down into six different modules of five motifs each. Before we even start the modules, I make sure that you have a good introduction to the course. You have a calendar. There's a four video series that talks about tension, thread choice, sewing machine speed, um, the art of doodling, um, practice sandwiches, which is, is you know, what I showed you earlier when I showed you my, my Hera marker. Um, so, uh, all of that is available to you right away. So that way you have a good foundational knowledge before we even get into the motifs. Um, where There are built-in practice weeks. So if you want to stay on course, so even though there are six modules, there are um, 12 weeks that we're together. So they're spaced out pretty well because I know that it's a little, um, it can be a little overwhelming when things come at you too fast. Um, weekly live Q and a sessions with me and your fellow students We spend about an hour together every Tuesday night, answering any questions you might have, sharing your wins, cheering each other on, um, two Saturday morning sewing sessions. So right now I have them set for Saturday morning, depending on what our, um, time zones look like once everyone is registered. Um, we will have uh, the opportunity to maybe move that to an afternoon if we've got a lot of West Coast folks or anything like that. Um, but there are two mornings where we get together on Zoom and we, you know, just chit chat or work on the course project together or um, ask more questions and just have more of a deeper conversation about what's going on. Um, there's a 40 page course workbook. That includes a doodle page for every single motif we're going to learn and everything you need to know about the course and where to find all of the information. I do offer a supply kit. So if you are looking for a supply kit that has what you need to make practice sandwiches, your thread, a hair marker, and needles, I do provide that in my store. Um, the link for that is in the class once you're registered. And then a ton of bonuses. I give you um, two free quilt patterns. One is a large throw for us to do as a, as a project together. Another one is a wall hang that you can do after class to share and show off your skills. It just begs for custom quilting. You'll absolutely love it. I give you my ultimate guide to quilt backings um, because quilt patterns often will just say you need seven yards of fabric for a backing, but it won't tell you how to cut and piece those together. My ultimate guide covers seven different sizes from crib to king and how to cut and piece those pieces of fabric together. So that way you have a backing and it also shows what you can cut off and put in your stash. Um, and a project tracking sheet, because if you are going to be anything like me, once you really got into free motion quilting, the whips are gonna start to add up. And so I include a project tracking sheet so that way you can keep those. To finish the course, you complete the 60 by 60 throw with us. Um, you are welcome to choose your own pattern, but the pattern that I designed is specifically for this class um, because it is it 
design in a way to highlight and show off all the motifs in the way that they're supposed to be used. Um, there is a deadline for applying for your finisher pin. However, if you don't finish in this cohort, you can always ask for it afterwards. I just have to, logistically speaking, I have to have a cutoff time where I can say, if I, for the most amount of people, I need to know by this time, I need to see the picture that you finished so that I can send you your finisher pin. You can always apply afterwards and get your finisher pin. Um, okay. So Scott is going to drop the link for From Whole Cloth into the chat. So if you're interested in it, go ahead and take a look there. Um, I will say that that is, since it is a lot deeper and dives more into free motion quilting and is three months long, it is a paid course. So I'm offering it. We spend three months together. I'm offering it for three payments of $130 each. If you do want to pay all at once, I do offer a discount. Those details are in the sales page. Um, and with that, that is um, from Whole Cloth. And I'm very excited about it. So I guess my only question for you all now is, are you ready for it? Okay. Let's get back into questions. If you have questions, quilting questions, um, anything about the, the entire process, not just the quilting part. If you have questions about from whole cloth, um, let me know. And I am going to start looking for questions. <sighs> Jan has a long arm. Um, when you say, will this work for that? What I will tell you is that for the first time in my life last week, I quilted on a long arm machine at uh, the handy quilter booth and it scared the crap out of me. It was too fast and care for it at all. So <coughs> excuse me. If you have a long arm machine, this class might not be for you simply because I can't give you the support you need. If something goes wrong with loading or putting the motifs in or trying to figure out where to put them, I just, I don't know enough about long arm machines to be able to support you. So Join at your own risk. I'm happy to have you in class if that if you come in understanding that that's the way it is for long armors. Um, but if if that is not something that you want to invest in just because of that, I know several great quilters who teach long arm quilting classes that I can refer you to. <coughs> okay, what quilting spray do I use? Um, whatever's on sale. Um, I think Heat and Bond has a really nice one. Um, I know that... Elmer's is okay. Um, I think it's it can be a little gunkier um, than anybody else, but I really like the heat and bond is is if I can find it and it's not unreasonably priced, I will that's always my first choice. Um, simply because they are in the fabric industry and they know how to make glue that doesn't ruin your fabric. Um okay. Jan has a handy quilter and she loves it. Um, I quilted on the Moxie XL and it was scary as hell. <laughs> Not gonna lie. <laughs> um, when I base a quilt, do I base it all at one time? So I am still basing it all at one time because what I'm doing is I'm spreading it out and taping it down to the floor and I'm rolling around on the floor like a sow trying to get everything smooth and flattened and glued and all of that. Uh, not going to lie. I am definitely feeling my age when I do that. So I think that it might be time for me to learn table basting that I see a bunch of folks doing where they do just a little bit of it at a time. I am so sorry. Um, so yes, but my, my bones and joints would say that I would not like to, um, do that. Um, okay. Marty, how often do I offer the class? She can't do it right now. Um, I'm not sure. I would like to offer it at least a couple of times this year. Um, but what I can say is that once you join, you have lifetime access. Um, so if you only get halfway through or if you, um, you know, get all the way through and in a few months you're like, oh, wow, I really wanted to do that McTavishing thing that Johnny talked about, but I haven't done it since class go back and watch the video. So you do have lifetime access. I am going to try to offer it a couple of times this year. Um, so, so this isn't like a last chance thing. It's not the last time I'm ever doing this, but you do have lifetime access. Um, Sandra could not get the audio to work. Okay. 
quilter's glove for any use other than not cutting yourself with the rotary quilter. Okay. So when I say the quilter's gloves, they are very, they're not chain mail at all. They, these are not for protecting yourself um, from your rotary blade. Um, missing part of my thumb, right? So look, if that's what you're looking for, you definitely need to make sure that they're like a chain mail or a, a metal. Um, these are just regular old gloves and they've got grippy palms. And you're probably noticing right away that I don't have um, index fingers and thumbs because the second I take them out of the, um, the package, I cut the tips off because now I can work with my thread. Like if it comes out of the needle or if I need to bury a thread, I can do that without having to take my gloves off. Um, and I don't know if I'm just lazy or trying to save time or both are genius or crazy, but um, that's the first thing I do. So if you're not cutting off your first finger and your thumbs of your quilting gloves, highly recommend. Um, okay, what tension settings do I use? Um, can you drop the link again? Sorry, um, I just saw somebody ask for that. Okay, um, what tension settings do I use? My machine does um, the the tension automatically. Um, so I I really don't have to worry about that too much. I will say that when people have tension problems, chances are they need a new needle. They need to re-thread the machine because maybe the thread jumped out of one of the hooks. Um, they need to clean out the bobbin race or they need to go take a walk for a minute because their body is too tight. But if most of your tension problems are gonna be solved by fixing those four things and not needing to make an adjustment in your machine. But that's what I love about the practice sandwich is that we can do all sorts of quilting. We can reorient ourselves with the motif and we can make sure that our tension is good to go on fabric that is none and none sense of All right. A bed for basting. I don't, could you get the everything like as taut as you would need to so that way your layers aren't shifty? Because I do have a very tall bed. Okay, so talk more about why quilting gloves. Is it just easier to grab the quilt easier? Okay, so maybe like in the short term or if you're doing a, a wall hanging size or a mini, um, sure, that, that could work just to grip it. But think about how, how heavy your biggest quilt is that you have, and then do like this with your hands and, and leave them like that for eight hours, right? Like that's, that's going to hurt after a while. And so this grippiness, even though it's, you know, it doesn't feel super grippy right now when it gets down on your, on your quilt, um, it, it really does grip. And it means that you can just kind of set your hand there instead of having to like claw down onto it. So it's just, it really saves some tension um, and, and lets you go a little bit longer. Do I use a mat to make it easier to slide the quilt on the machine surface? No, I do not. And I have never tried one, so I can't say whether or not they're worth it. Um, I have had students say that they would never quilt without it. And I have some say that it was just a pain and they sewed through it because they didn't stick it down right. And they regretted that they spent the money. Um, so, uh, so, you know, with that, again, like I said earlier, the, the supplies you need, it, it's literally, you know, these three things and, and your sewing machine, right? Um, again, $6 billion industry worldwide, you do not need to spend all of it. So if you would like to give it a try, if you'd like to talk to other quilters first, um, you know, I know that that some folks love them, some folks hate them, and it's just a matter of personal preference. Um, I have never tried it because I'm just not a gadget person at all. Um, Kimberly, I pinned my quilt, which is also painful on the floor. Yes, but she's not sure how to spray base. Do you, I show you how to do that in the paid class? Um, I don't know that that video would be fun to watch, um, but I would definitely be willing to consider like setting up a camera and just having it run um, the next time I base something and and uploading that to the YouTube channel and 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 giving that away. Again, I don't I don't know how fun it would be to watch. You'd probably get a lot of, you know, bottom shots and and you know, hair falling down, but I would definitely be willing to shoot it the next time I do a basting. Um, what is the fabric for the practice school sandwich? I will, if I've got like some fat quarters that I'm like, I'm never going to use these things again, I will use those. But my go-to is I buy muslin, 
by the bolt. Um, a lot of times you can get a coupon for Joann's. Um, I, I'm lucky enough that I can I can buy wholesale, but I think even regular price is 99 cents a yard. I cut a half a yard and then I cut it into two fat quarters and then I put a piece of scrap basting in the middle and this is spray basted. So you can see like it's sticking together. Thank you, Scott. Um, and then because of the glue, it comes right back together. Um, but muslin is all I use because we are not friends. We are not taking these and making pillows out of them later on. They are for practice and moving on. Okay. Um, do you have to pen when you spray base? Nope. Spray base is good enough. Um, once, once it's down there, I know a lot of people, um, a lot of tutorials that I have watched before I started spray basting, um, have said to, um, iron them front and back. Once you're done, I guess that kind of heats up the glue and activates it, but I've, I don't, and I've never had a problem. Um, okay. Sean out. That would be a great time-lapse video. I'm so yes, I have seen the time-lapse videos of folks doing design wall stuff and, and basting and all of that. And they're fun to watch, but I feel like reels have really done us a disservice because I feel like folks will see somebody doing some free motion quilting and see how fast it is. And even though in your mind, you're like, your conscious mind knows that it's a reel and that it's sped up and that that's not real life. But then when you sit down to quilt in real life, you're still comparing yourself to that speed from the real. And then you think that you're not good enough. And that gets to your confidence, right? And that's one of the three things that you need to be successful is believing in yourself and having that mindset. So I, I enjoy nothing more than watching the, the tasty videos with the sped up cooking. I'm not a huge fan of it in the quilting world because I think it sets unrealistic expectations for us to meet. Um, do you get a lot of overspray when you spray base? Um, yes, I find a combination of like putting a strip of craft paper around um, will catch most of that. And then getting better about once I'm on the edges, I'm trying to like angle my spray my sprayer into the quilt instead of just straight down over the quilt. That cuts down on a lot of the um, spray based. Do I use stencils? No. I do not. Um, I am a huge fan of doodling. Can you hand me the New York? It's in my inbox journal. I'm a huge fan of doodling and I don't understand the science behind it. Thank you. Um, but drawing, even though you're moving your pen over paper and when you get to the machine, you're moving your fabric under the needle, you would think it would be opposite. But I just, any single meeting that could have been an email gets doodled. And I love using a journal with lines because if I'm doing something like switchbacks where I'm going to want to make sure that I'm pretty consistent in my height, those lines help me with that. And then this kind of becomes a stencil that my body memorizes. And once I have drawn the motif out, which is just why you see it over and over and over again, once I've drawn that motif out, my body has made that stencil with its muscle memory, and then I can go to the machine and just freehand it. I promise you, you will be able to do the same thing too. All right. Are there any other, you guys have been great with questions. I love answering questions. I'm seeing some smiling faces, so I'm really, really happy. I hope that you're enjoying yourself. We still have a few minutes left. Um, if you are interested in more questions, an extended table for my machine for a larger surface, is it necessary to get one specific to your own machine? So are you talking about, so, so the table itself is just a six, in, a six foot conference table. It's, it's wood, but it's just a six foot table. Are you talking about something like a, a plexiglass extender around there? Um, if that's what you're talking about, uh, yes, I think it is pretty important to get it specific to your machine because then you're not going to have any gaps, um, on, on in between the machine and the extender for, for your quilt to fall down into, um, and get hung up on. So yes, we're talking about the extender. Yep. And I, I absolutely adore mine. I, the only thing that I wish is that it was even bigger than it is, but at that point I should probably just get a custom table. 
Okay, Jean. Yay. Excellent. Okay. Okay. Can we drop the link one more time for the course page? <laughs> Thank you. All right. I am happy to stay on as long as you all have questions. Um, but if not, I will send out the replay tomorrow. Um, take a look at From Whole Cloth if diving deeper is something that you think that you would be interested in. Uh, and Otherwise, I will see you all later.